You're, You're watching, watching me on Aussie Beach TV outside Delicatessen in the beautiful surfers paradise oh, amongst the beautiful people. <laughs> Stay tuned. viewers a bit about your experiences with the Zeitgeist Movement? Sure, yeah, I'm the chapter coordinator here for the yep. Zeitgeist Movement on the Gold Coast. Uh, the Zeitgeist Movement is a sustainability movement where we are making people understand uh, science yep. and social structures and basically how we can improve the lives of everyone on the planet. With very simple steps, it's just trying to make people aware that our social structure no longer caters towards people. Yeah. Our entire system is based around money. Uh, the Zeitgeist Movement understands that money is the cause of all social distortion. Mm -hmm. We can talk about people like the Illuminati or all these uh, Rothschilds and things like that. These people are just a response to the system itself. If we arrested all of these people and threw them in prison, it wouldn't matter. Someone would just take their place because yeah. that's what money does. It's like when the police bust the drug dealers in town, it doesn't matter. Within a month, someone They've moves in and controls the market yeah. because it is the market that demands that. Yeah? So these people are just systemic responses to that. And whereas money has worked for us in the past, it no longer works for us now. It's actually very detrimental to our society. Yeah. Our entire society is built. Money itself is a value system. It's important for people to understand that money is not just a means of exchange. It's a value system. Everything is given a value. Mm -hmm. And the more common the product, the less value it has. The scarcer a product, the higher the value. Yeah. So we, we have a system where we want to make things as scarce as possible so that you can't give people free food. You can't give them free clothes because then you lose the value of the property. And we also stand in a situation now where our technology is moving in such a way the old beliefs are that people had to have a job and work and produce things are no longer relevant because machines and technology can produce more, faster, quicker than anyone ever can. Soon people will be three-dimensional printing cars, planes, things like this. So the whole manufacturing industry is finished. We must make this change over to what we call a natural law resource-based economy. Yep. Uh, the Zeitgeist Movement is uh, understanding of three principles. We are asking for the United Nations to declare the world the living heritage of all living people, meaning that everybody owns everything, yeah. but nobody actually owns anything. If you yeah. understand, it's all ours to share. Yeah. Because as we teach our children as they're growing up, share everything, and then as soon as they turn 18, it's like, you're on your own, every man for themselves. Yeah. Whereas it's like, no, we should still be sharing everything. You know, The whole concept of people owning cars and stuff like that is just crazy share it you know and then we use it uh, we also want the scientific method of governance meaning rather than politicians deciding oh this is how we will have our society you can literally ask scientists what is the best way for us to live where should we be living how we should be producing our food yep. and without having any monetary restrictions we can do these steps very very easily yeah. you know and as we call it with a natural law resource-based economy meaning a, a society without any form of money or ownership yep. so nobody has any advantage over anybody else everything is shared Equal. and you will find that once money is gone literally 80 percent of all of our society with all its flashing lights and advertising literally vanishes overnight yep. as does war as does poverty you know, once people can no longer profit from these things, they quite simply vanish. This money makes everybody exactly. evil. Exactly. Well, it doesn't make people well, evil in the sense God. that, the sense that you, you, can make, you can make steps. Yeah, of course. Well, the more money you get, the more amazing things that you can have. Yeah. yeah. And people will want that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is uh, we need to move past that and understand for a lot of people, it's not good to have so many things. I mean, what's the point of living in a massive mansion and having 10 cars? I mean, you don't need that. No one needs that. Mm -hmm. You know, let's share it all instead. Yeah. So that's what we try and get people to understand. Yeah. So with you being a small business owner and with the food industry, mm -hmm. how do you feel about, let's say, for example, a guy got arrested for giving free food to a homeless person. Do you agree with that or oh, not no, I, agree? I think that's shocking. I mean, yeah, yeah come on. I mean, that's outrageous. And it, yeah. you can understand it from a monetary principle, they are working the principle. You cannot give people free food because you are taking then away money from uh, the, the, the people who sell the product. Yeah. Understand? It's like we have 
everybody mowing their lawns every weekend with their little victim mowers and stuff like that and it's like wow if we dug all of that up and planted food and everybody grew food as a community you'd yeah. bring a great social cohesion and you would have free food and everyone would eat healthily you know but you can't do that because Coles and Woolworths demand monetary multiplication they must protect their right to control these products you and know? now the vegetables and everything are getting sprayed chemically chemi Exactly, as well exactly. Now, so really and that's not. because our entire agricultural industry is not set yeah. up to create food for people to eat. It's created to maximize profit, yeah. monetary multiplication. Again, money distorting what would naturally be a way for us to survive as a species. Yeah. But we have this thing that places itself above the natural order. So everything is set up in that. That's why we have these massive agricultural farms, which is the most destructive way of growing anything. Yeah deal with large-scale amounts of pests and plagues because all of a sudden the insects say, oh my god, jackpot, look at all this food, bang, and they hit into it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we spread the food out and everybody controlled it within the area, you wouldn't have to worry about pesticides because if some area got hit and wiped out, there's still plenty of other areas that could source the food and bring it into everybody. Food is very easy to grow. We are not yeah. teaching children how to grow food. We're not teaching children how to survive. I think in schools there should be a subject actually called life skills because yeah, that's course. something they actually do teach need. Teach people how to cook, teach people how to yeah. grow food, you know, teach people how to be Budget aware and how to money, relate to yeah, other people, you know. So then after the Second World War, everything's become monetary focused. So we no longer have our society and we, we, we don't, we've put together a system of money which has no purpose other than multiplication. We have not sat down. If you have your life, you're planning for yourself, oh, I wish to do these following steps to reach this point. Yeah. You know? But money has none of that. Money is just, this just must multiply. Yeah. It doesn't, we haven't set it to say, okay, as we're using this system, it should provide people with housing and food and shelter and, and improve the lives of everybody. But it's not set up that way. It's just to multiply. Yeah. And that's why we look at so much distortion and why uh, Abbott can still be talking about coal and we can say we see how damaging it is but oh well, we can't let the coal industry collapse because that'll collapse our economy and poverty and blah blah blah. The most important thing for people to remember is if the money disappears everything you see around you is still here. Yeah. This is still real, this is still tangible, it's still here. We are still here, people with minds are still here, love is still here. That's exactly you know? right. Money it's yeah. an illusion, it's all in our minds, yeah. it's just an illusion and we need to move past it. We need to what is called a type one society. Yeah. And you can look in that, Google that. There's a, there's a lot of information about that. Carl Sagan. And if more people let go a bit of more technology, we'll be more social and be able to interact uh, with more people. Yes and no. I mean, there's a lot of problems now. People say, oh, technology is antisocial and stuff like that. This is just a phase. For us as a species, remember for literally, <laughs> for our entire existence, Yeah. Uh, people would be born and nothing would change in their life at all. Nothing. They would live and die and it would be the same. Yeah. We suddenly have come into a situation where the last 40 to 50 years you have this massive technological growth and because technology doesn't grow like slowly like that, technology actually goes whoop like that. Yeah. You know? And that's where we are now. We're right there, heading there. And that's why everything is collapsing around us because our social system doesn't understand how it's going. And uh, if we really look into what we're able of doing, yeah, we can easily feed everybody, house everybody, just like that, yeah. within moments. Very simple, we just need to make the choice. Everybody has to stop moving away from what they can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. Once you take care of people's basic needs, you suddenly find that, hey, I can help people. I'm not worried about having to pay my rent. I'm not worried about how I'm gonna feed my kids. That's all taken care of. What can I do with my time? I can help these people here who need help. Because yeah. everybody wants to help. That's what we are as a species. Come on, we are still beautiful. That is we are still lovely people. There's still hope. So from talking to you, Christopher, I can tell that you don't watch too much TV. So how do you find out? How do you find out all your information? Um, yeah, you're correct. I don't watch any TV really, except for maybe when there's a Richard Attenborough thing on. But uh, even then, you can watch them all online. I think the internet is uh, an incredibly important thing. People need to understand the internet is the world's first globalized language. Yeah. Okay, we are going through teething problems and this is why they are trying to control the internet now because they understand the power that this information has. I mean, people don't understand that you are walking around with your iPhone and people think, oh, this is great and here's my dinner and here's my boobs and here's my selfie and that's fine. But you carry in your hand access to more information than any king or queen or emperor or politician of the past. Yeah. Okay, all of these people, Winston Churchill, all these people that people look back and think, oh, these are great people. You have more information at your hands than any of those people did. Yeah. And it's there. You just have to reach out and take it. 
There are so many people sharing such important, powerful information. And not to make money, they are doing it for free. Yeah, You can always tell if someone's trying to help you because they will be doing it for free. Yeah. Uh, the Zeitgeist Movement has an amazing channel on the YouTube, TZM official channel, uh, full of lectures and uh, massive amounts of information for people to share and look at. It's all free, nothing is uh, charged. Um, the movies that we provide are all free. We also provide various dinners that we do and stuff like that. I do here to get like-minded people in uh, with yeah. permaculture and stuff like do that. Do that on certain days or nights? Uh, or? We try and organize stuff in the night time. Yeah, definitely yeah. sit out here and just hang out and stuff. It's just also nice to be around other people who share the same views. Yeah. So you don't feel that you're alone in a sea of emptiness, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's important to bring people together. Yeah, turn off your TV. It's garbage. They control all of it. They brainwash you. They tell you exactly what to think. And they fill you with fear. Yeah. And while everybody is screaming about Ebola, there are more important issues that are actually real that we need to do about it. And it's weird now the American midterm elections are over and all of a sudden Ebola and ISIS have just poof, just vanished off the TV. Yeah, that is. It's just gone anymore. It's like, hey, what happened there, huh? <laughs> As they do before. It is a method of control. Isn't it called tell lie vision? Yeah. You know, basically, a vision for telling lies, yeah? So that's why I don't watch it. Yeah, online. Be online. Get online and free internet for everybody. Why is owning a small business such an important freedom in Australia? Um, well, I think that's kind of a bit of a myth, really, because you end up just working and working and working. Every small business owner I know is just working their ass off to pay exorbitant costs to banks and electricity and suppliers. You know, our, our system is squeezing the life out of these people. I mean, and it's a shame because small business employs more than anybody. You know, they provide more of a community to, to people than any other large corporation would ever do. And, you know, we pay our taxes here rather than ship the money off seas. Yeah. And I think it's also been an Australian thing, you know, where we like to be by ourselves. We don't like to be told by other people what to do. I mean, I opened my cafe also for a, for a lifestyle, but also because, you know, I don't enjoy working for other people, especially other people who don't understand the industry perhaps as much as I do. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, it has its positives and it has its negatives and I'm sure for a lot of small business owners yeah there's a lot of negatives now I mean let's admit it the economy is not good uh, people can talk about it but unfortunately the rich people are making so much money at the moment it actually disguises the fact that the rest of us are making nothing yeah I know so uh, there's those sort of things to consider but yeah would I much rather be by myself than working for some large corporation yeah without a doubt you know and I have worked for large corporations before, and I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy the way that people are treated as numbers. I mean, people are, yeah. all of my staff, I have tremendous respect for. I know about their lives. I'm interested in them as people. As people, like I say, people are lovely. Everyone yeah. is lovely, yeah? Yeah, smash big business. That's all I can say, huh? But then even then, it's not a fault of them either. I can tell you, that's another systemic replace. You could destroy coals and destroy Woolworths. It wouldn't matter. Someone else steps into their place and eventually everything would move up. Money is just moving <laughs> everything up to the rich. It's what it does. Capital goes to the capitalists, yeah, as they say, us. yeah? And we're all kind of left behind straggling over and fighting over the rest. Yeah. But we don't realize that it's actually us who have the most amount of power because we're the ones who empower this entire system, yeah? And we can bring it down anytime we want. We just have to say enough. Stop yeah. listening to the people in power. My God, if you're listening to Tony Abbott, you, you need help. That man needs help. He is mentally ill. He has neurological damage, you know? <laughs> he is... Uh, how can a leader of a country be so ignorant and foolish and... Yeah, it's, it shows you why politics doesn't work. If he can make it to the top, yeah. then the system is flawed. As simple as that, yeah? <laughs> And why don't we use scientists and people who understand things rather than, oh, I'm a lawyer, so now I'm a politician, so therefore I'm in charge of agriculture. So what do you know about agriculture? Nothing. Exactly. And that's where we're getting Exactly. Our that's from where everything's going they wrong. They don't know. Exactly. You yeah. know, they are just focusing on money. How do we continue Have to continue money? Have you seen an money? interview with him on TV when he hasn't got I a script in front of him? I watched plenty of interviews with that guy on TV and Every I have a good laugh. It's, his reaction. It's classic. He is... For the sheer comedy value, same as Clive Palmer, for sheer comedy value, these people are excellent. Yeah. But the sad, tragic part is that they are destroying many, many lives, and that's the unfunny part. If they had no relevance whatsoever, oh God, you would laugh your head off to these people and think how amazingly funny it is. Yeah. Especially Abbott. Come on, seriously. I mean, how that man has not died crossing the road is just beyond me, you know? He's just really... <laughs> Uh, but that's also a good sign for our society and our technology that people that stupid are still alive. 
Yeah. You know, because back in the old days, they wouldn't have made it. They would have been killed by bears or animals or whatever. Yeah. They wouldn't have made it. Our society is, is protecting these people now. That's really cool, in a way, kind of. But Can we uh, be protected? <laughs> we are protected, darling. We have to just understand that we have the power, literally. If you could picture a, a seesaw with a politician standing on the end, we're standing on the other side, it's us who have the power. All we have to do is just step off, and they're gone. Yeah. That's it, and it can literally change overnight. That's all it requires, just a shift in consciousness. People changing, no longer for you, but what you can do for others, as Kennedy said. Yeah. What would be the ultimate way to, des to destroy a TV set? Oh, to destroy one? Yeah, the ultimate way. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I like the whole throwing them off the balcony of the high-rise apartment while you're yep. snorting cocaine off a, <laughs> off a girl's ass, but not everybody has access to these things, you know, and that's what the Zeitgeist Movement wants to change. We want access to these things, yeah? Yes, access. But um, to be honest with you, I'm not into wastage, I'm not into destruction. I'm one of those that pick up the rubbish sort of people yeah. and let's recycle all of this stuff, please, people. Because, yeah, but come on, that's what I would do. I'd do it totally rock star, like off the head, snorting the cocaine off the butt. And that would be it. That would be me. I could do maybe the Elvis thing, but I hate guns. Yeah. I'm completely against guns. Can't stand weapons of any shape or size. Bikini News is about to be launched um, by Australia Aussie Beach TV right here in Australia. Will mm -hmm. you be watching? I will be watching, most definitely. I yeah. think it's important that people support independent media because they are the only people telling the truth at the moment. They have no vested interest. People are just trying to share information because people care. Yep. You know, uh, there's nothing to profit from it. Independent TV is hugely important. As I've said to Jack Russell many times, you know, you, you are sharing a vitally important message. You, people need to understand how vitally important you are in this time because there are not a lot of voices telling people what is wrong. And we need many yeah. voices as possible to get out there and tell people, hey, you know, we really need to address these situations. So yeah, I support independent TV 100%, as should everybody out there in the interweb lands. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs>